A Quality of Mercy, starring Robert Nepper with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling from a story by Sam Rolfe. Heard in the cast were Roderick Peoples, Kip Karstedt, Jeff Lupatin, Joby Cerny, Roddy Chong, Joseph Orunda, and Doug James. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Man, oh man. They get it? Way off. What are they doing? Lobbing them in by hand? One more time. Baker Company. Baker Company. You missed the target. That's what I'm telling you. Well, try it again. Short. 500 yards. Sergeant Casarano says it was 500 yards short. That's right. Still. Tell him to raise it up. Sergeant says to elevate it. They say they can't elevate it anymore. What are they using? A slingshot? Listen. If you can't aim higher... Give me that. How do you expect to... This is Baker Company F.O. Good going, boys. Yeah, I've seen what you did. A big, fat nothing. You wrecked five acres of rice paddies and you torn up a beautiful grove of palm trees, but that's it. What's it to me? Let me tell you. We're sitting out here on our duffs on a hill in the middle of nowhere, and you know what we're doing? We're having a little discussion. Yeah, that's right. Maybe you can help us out. We're trying to decide whether you got something in your religion against sending a shell into a cave. Or is it too hard for you? Because if it is... <laughs> you tell them, Sarge. Oh, those jokers. What? Say again. Bypass? Oh, now that's more like it. Because all you accomplish today is to tear up five acres of real estate and keep a handful of Japanese soldiers from falling asleep. Yeah. Well, I got a question for you. Anybody know how long it takes an enemy to die from insomnia? Same to you. Oh, we'll keep in contact, all right. You sure they're on our side? Makes me wonder sometimes. Give me a light. Here you go, sir. So what's the word? Did I hear you say bypass? They're gonna keep fire until late this afternoon. At least that's what they say. Then if they can't smoke them out, we'll just have to bypass it and move on. That's what I like to hear. Amen. I'm feeling better already. Me too. I'm getting cross-eyed looking through these binoculars. When they say flanks, I say thanks. I don't know about the rest of you, but I got no big urge to run headfirst into anything anymore. Not at this stage of the game. That's for sure. still there. Nothing but a hole in the side of a mountain looking right back at us. They, they can see us, but we can't see what's in the cave. And we're supposed to take that thing? Buddy boy, when two air strikes and a whole afternoon of lobbing shells don't accomplish anything, well, that means you better say your prayers and start counting your cartridges. But, Sarge, I thought you said... Th Put it this way. I got what you call a nodding acquaintance with the bottom of this barrel. And when they can't budge an enemy with the big stuff, that's when they call out the queen of battle, the ever-loving infantry. Ain't we the lucky ones. What do you figure we got left, Sarge? Before it's over, I mean. Month? Doesn't matter what I think. 
Maybe less, huh? Don't ask me. We got them ringed in all over the place. The poop is, they're as good as finished, even in Okinawa. Then why are we still fighting? That's the trouble with these little crumbs. I just don't know when they're licked. Maybe they ain't human. Or maybe they just don't get it. Think about it. There they are, holed up in a miserable cave, half starved, half beat to death. And nobody bothered to tell them it's the bottom of the night. They already lost most of their ball club, but they keep on fighting. Why? Yeah. Why? It's August 1945. The last grimy pages of a dirty, torn book of war. The place is the Philippine Islands. The men you've just met are what's left of a platoon of American infantry. Their dulled and tired eyes, set deep in dulled and tired faces, can now look forward to a miracle, the moment when the nightmare comes to an end. Or so it appears. For they've got one more battle to fight, a crazy, illogical standoff in the final days of a particular hell known as World War II. And in a moment, we'll observe that battle firsthand. August 1945, the Philippines. But in reality, it's high noon in a place called the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, A Quality of Mercy, starring Robert Nepper, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. There we go again. Hit anything this time, Sarge? I tell you what, I'm not even going to bother to look. You check it out for me, all right, Anacek? Feet sitting here. Where's the field glasses? Be my guest. Well, oh well. What do you know? You see something down there? Sure. I see a white flag. Yep. Now they're coming out of the cave. And guess what, boys? They got something for us. Uh, looks like... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. There's a pretty little geisha girl leading the pack. And she's carrying a tray full of rice. And a hot towel. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Hey, hey, hold on. There is something coming. Who is it? Don't know. Uh-oh. I think I see a gold bar on his helmet. Give me those glasses. Oh, man. Just what we need. A brand new Louis. All spit and polish. Ain't he handsome, though? All right, men. Try at least to look like Army. What for? He won't last long. Well, looky what we got here. That uniform's so new it ain't never been washed. Brand new holster, too. Well, that's what I call a pistol. No kidding. Pearl handle and all. Sent us a real tiger this time. Five bucks says it's never been fired. Which of you is Sergeant Cazarano? <clears throat> that would be me. I'm Lieutenant Cattell. Sir. I'm taking over your platoon. Out of fact. What's your situation here? We're observing for a mortar company, Lieutenant. So I've been told. That cave down there? A bunch of the enemies holed up. Been trying to get them out for two days. No luck? Nothing doing. Your binoculars, please, Sergeant. Here you go. Hmm. Tough situation. I guess you know what that means. Sir? We have some mopping up to do. We? Yeah, you heard me. I'd say we'd do best to go at it frontally. Frontally? Yeah, just move right in and wipe them out. Hey, Lieutenant. 
You sure you got the right platoon? What about it, Sergeant? Well, now, uh... Call the rest of the company together. The rest of the company? On the double. Where are they? Back at the CP. This is it? All six of us. In that case, we'll have to go it alone. Say again? Something wrong with your ears? Go it alone? With a half dozen men? No, I'm begging the lieutenant's pardon. You just inherited a good group, but, but not that good. This is infantry, sir, not kamikaze. He doesn't have the wrong platoon. He's got the wrong army. Your name is what? Uh, Watkins, Lieutenant. Andrew J. Are you accustomed to talking to an officer on your back? Matter of fact, sir, I'm not accustomed to talking to an officer in any way. And why is that, soldier? We've lost our last three platoon, Louis, and I guess you could say there's been a space of time in between. Well, you've got another one assigned now, and you're going to have to learn to live with that. Starting with this reminder. When you address an officer, I want to see you stand up in your feet like a man. We've been on the line 33 days, Lieutenant. Your point is? Not much sleep. You know what that's like? You have my sympathy, Sergeant. But my job is to lead this platoon, and I plan to do exactly that. My way. Then maybe you'd better tell us. Just what is your way? When I tell you boys to jump, you'll jump. When I tell you to stand up on your feet, you'll do so. And if I tell you to head toward that cave, guns port and bayonets fixed, that's exactly what you're going to do. Double time. Any more questions? Begging the lieutenant's pardon. Any more questions? <sighs> no, sir. Good. What are your orders, lieutenant? Since we don't have a clear line of sight into the cave, and since there's no cover between here and there, we don't have a choice. We'll have to move down into the open and just go ahead and take it. Full frontal. What about it, Sergeant? You want my opinion? I'm willing to discuss it. In terms of military strategy. In military terms, Lieutenant, it goes like this. First off, you better muddy up that gold bar on your helmet so it doesn't shine too bright. Otherwise, you've got yourself a target they can shoot at right in the middle of your head. Then you better take off the one on your collar and stick it in your pocket. I'm asking you for a chronology. And I'm giving it to you. The enemy happens to be half-starved and half on its knees, but they're not dumb. They're tough, shrewd, and they got eyes. We lost three platoon officers already because they made a motion of command with one of their hands. That's what the Japs look for, a person in command. I'd intended to remove the insignia. But what about the cave? What do you know about it? Not much. We saw some of them run in, holding each other up. They're in bad shape. No telling how many were already in there. But they got a machine gun, and somebody's pretty good with it. But not good enough to stop a full-on attack. Well, maybe we'll have to do that, eventually. But as far as I'm concerned, the war don't have to end by dinner time. I'm aware of that, Sergeant. I say we sit on it for the rest of the day and see what some 105s can do before we make a final plan. You might be right, for someone who's used to taking his time. But it strikes me that we could move in there right now and wipe them out inside of an hour. Get close enough to lob grenades and pulverize them. If you want to get the job done instead of loafing, that seems to be the one thing this platoon is extremely good at. <laughs> Lieutenant, how long have you been out here? What's that got to do with it? Oh, not a whole lot, I guess. But you make it sound like a football game. It ain't a football game, Lieutenant. It's one long gut ache. With some torn up, mangled boys fresh off the farm, and it's gonna take a long time to forget. You ain't been shot at yet, Lieutenant. Remember that. How would you know... And you ain't shot nobody either, have you? You beat me over here, Sergeant, I'll give you that. But when it comes to killing Japanese, I think you'll find him a highly trained and very efficient officer. Yes, sir. I'm sure you are. I was well-schooled in tactics and equipment. I'd say you could all use a refresher course around here. Maybe so. You, soldier. Yes, sir. Let me see your rifle. Uh, right here, sir. That's a filthy piece, soldier. Well, there's a lot of mud around here. That's no excuse. 
I want clean weapons in this platoon. That's number one priority. The worst thing that can happen is for your weapon to jam. Now break them down and clean them, because we're here to kill Japs. Or did you forget? That's our job, and by God, we're gonna do it. This outfit better shape up fast, or I'm putting you on report. Sounds pretty gung-ho. Yeah, real bloodthirsty. Think he wants us to scalp him, too? You have something to say? Me? No, sir. What is it with you men? No sleep? Or no guts? You tired of killing Japs, is that it? Or don't you have the stomach for it? Listen, sir. Let it go. No, when I got something to say, I'm gonna say it. Go ahead. Let's hear it. We're 24 months up on you, Lieutenant. We've seen a lot of blood and heard a lot of screaming from both sides. You've got a big deal about doing some killing. We'll fall in on that order, don't you worry. But you can't order us to like it. We've seen enough dead men to last us for the rest of our lives. The rest of our lives and then some. We'll do some more killing for you, Lieutenant. All you want. Just don't ask us to cheer about it. We'll see about that. Radio operator. Here. Let me base camp. Sir? Tell them to hold mortar fire. On my order. For now, prepare to attack. We're going to take that cave head on, whether you farm boys like it or not. Give me your binoculars, Sergeant. You can't see anything down there. It's too dark. It won't be dark when the shells hit. I want to see how close they come. You think they're going to make it this time? I'm betting on it. I told them to elevate exactly three degrees. Oh, why didn't I think of that? With the side of that mountain blown out, they won't have any place to hide. The cleanup will be easy, Sergeant. Even for you. Piece of cake, Lieutenant. Piece of cake. Still short. Yep, that's what it looks like. Casarano. Does flamethrowers arrive? Yes, sir. Good. I figure we can move in behind the next barrage and get within 50 yards of the opening. Just like that. Flamethrowers can do a lot of damage, can't they? They can. What about phosphorus grenades? Oh, them too. If you put them in the right place. But... But what? I wouldn't want to get hit by one. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the enemy. Right. We'll wait till dawn, then move in. Check with company for the mortar barrage so we'll be ready to go. Okay, sir. I'll tell the men we're going in. You'll have to double time this one, Sergeant. That is, if you want to keep up with me. Oh, we'll keep up. But... Something you want to say to me, Sergeant? No. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not your cup of tea, am I, Sergeant? I guess you got a little too much vinegar for me, Lieutenant. That's what it takes in wartime. You know, sir... What? We could bypass it. Bypass? Where did you get an idea like that? There aren't 20 men in that cave. Most of them are sick or injured or half-starved. They're probably out of their minds by now. But they're Japs, aren't they? They're men. They're dirty little cowards. Are they? You've got a funny group here, Sergeant. And you're the oddball of the bunch. If I may make an observation, the way I size you up is this. You've either got battle fatigue, the whole lot of you, or you're chicken. Maybe a little of both. Maybe neither. I don't rightly know. But the way I size you up, Lieutenant, is... Go ahead, say it. I'd like to hear this. Pea green shave tail right out of the panhandle. Scared to death he won't bag his limit. Or worse, all shook up because he's afraid somebody will peg him as a Johnny come lately instead of a rough, tough killer. I think that should do. You ask, you get told. You can't have it both ways. I said that should. You want to prove your manhood, Lieutenant? Okay. But it's too late to get your choice about how to do it. It's down to one lousy cave full of sick, pitiful, half-dead losers. 
and a handful of dirty, bone-tired men who've had their craw full of this war. You're a lousy soldier, Casarano, and that goes for the rest of these poor, sensitive, sad, sick boys you want to bottle feed. Did someone forget to tell you that when you fight a war, you fight a war? And that you kill until you're ordered to stop killing? I got the message, Lieutenant. Roger Wilco. I hope so. The message that there's always somebody like you who squeaks in just before they close the door. Somebody who has to grind his axe before you can give that final order, no matter what. You listen up, Sergeant. What's your pleasure, Lieutenant? How many more have to die before you get satisfaction? Offhand, I'd say all of them. I don't care where they are or who they are. If they're the enemy, that's it. First day of the war or last day of the war, they get it. Keep the binoculars. You're gonna need them. You've broken your foot glasses, sir. I know. I... What? I said, it appears that your binoculars are broken, Lieutenant. Give me those. Wait. Who are... Sir? I said, who are... What are you? Sergeant Yamazaki. But these men, they're all... All... Soldiers, sir. Your soldiers. What? We await your command, Lieutenant Yamori. Sir! Well, where are you going? Not that way, sir! Not that way, toward the mountain! Look, he runs down the hill! To the cave! No! It's too dangerous! He must not! Watch out! <laughs> Lieutenant! Stay down! Did you get him, sir? I don't know, dirty little... Kazarano! Hold your fire! It's me! There he is! Get him! Lousy chap! Take a bite off this! <laughs> Lieutenant! Stay where you are! We will return fire! They got us trapped in here. We'll never get out of this cave. Oh yeah? Watch this. Eat lead, creeps! <laughs> Lieutenant Yamori! Run back now! Keep your head down! Which way? I can't tell. Which way? Do I... The hill. Is it burnt? Lieutenant Yamori? What? That was. That was exceedingly brave, sir. To attack the Americans single handedly. Americans? What are you talking about? The Americans in the cave. Twenty or thirty of them. Most of them wounded, but nonetheless armed. Very dangerous. Like animals. Aren't that many? Are you... Are you all right, sir? Where are we? In the clearing, sir. At the top of the hill. I've seen you before, but I can't... Who are you? Who am I, sir? Sergeant Yamazaki. Are you all right, sir? Are you feeling well? I asked you a question. Question? What are we doing here? What is this place? Why? Why Corregidor, sir? Corregidor? When? When, sir? You mean... What is the day's date? May 4th, sir. May 4th. Can't be May 4th. No? It's August. Don't you understand? August. August the 6th. Uh, 
I humbly ask the lieutenant to forgive me, but I must correct him. The date is May 4th. <sighs> May 4th? When? What year? The year 1942, sir. Is the... Is the lieutenant all right? A bump to the head? Uniform, I'm wearing. It looks just like... Like all your uniforms. Perhaps a touch of malaria. Did you call me? Lieutenant, sir. Your rank. You called me something else. You called me by a name... Yamori. Your name, sir. Lieutenant Yamori. <laughs> no. No! No! What happened to me? What's going on here? What's happened? What is wrong with this man? I don't know, Captain Nakagawa. Yamuri, are you sick? <laughs> no. No. I require an answer, Lieutenant. I asked if you were sick. Is that it? I'm, I, I'm sick. We will be moving out soon. If you are too ill to move, you leave me no choice. We shall leave you here. Leave me? We have no transport for the wounded, as you well know. So, we will very shortly move forward, and you shall remain here. My name. My name. My name isn't... On your feet when an officer speaks to you. But my... My name isn't Yamuri. I swear to you. Something's... Something's happened. My name isn't Yamuri. My name is... Silence. Place this man under arrest. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, please. Get up. I gave you an order, Sergeant Yamasaki. Men... Forgive me, sir. I... You what? I was... I was feverish for a moment. I, I, I forgot where I was. Ah. I'm... All right now. You're sure of that? Yes, sir. I'm sure. I'm, I'm very sure. Very well. Sergeant! We move out in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, sir. Unfortunately, the artillery was unable to do its job. We shall attack the cave in force. Ready to move out. Sergeant. Yes? The cave he mentioned. Are you feeling better now? Yes, but the cave... He means the one where I was just... The cave with the enemy. Put a new clip in your rifle. Let me help you. Which enemy? The American enemy, sir. The stupid fools who don't know when to give up. Here, fix your bayonet. My... The captain does not like to take a prisoners. Captain? Yes, Sergeant. Prisoners, sir. What? What about the prisoners? You know my policy. Yes, sir. But what if uh, they surrender? What about the wounded? I doubt that there will be any left to surrender when we are finished. Yamori! Sir? You will take the first section. Move forward as quickly as you can. Then drop down 50 yards in front of the opening. But, sir... Watch for my signal. We will cover you with automatic fire for two or three minutes before you make the frontal attack. Sections two and three will follow. Understood? Yes, sir. I didn't hear you. I understand, sir. 
Be very sure that you do. Now, go and prepare your men. Your section, sir. Which? Over there. The captain expects you to lead them into victory. Come with me for a moment. Where, sir? Away from the others. Look down there. The cave. Yes? You said... You said something about their being wounded inside? I think so, Lieutenant. When they ran inside, they were carrying each other. I don't think there are more than 20 or 30 men. Not even that. It shouldn't be too difficult. They are only Americans, not good fighters. And they are very weak. Poor, starving soldiers. Please, you mustn't speak that way. The captain... Don't they know when to quit? If they have wounded, what's the point? They can't go on this way. If they surrender now, there might be a chance. What did you say? Nothing, Captain. I didn't hear. What did you just say? Repeat it. Just if... If they're wounded, sir, perhaps... Perhaps what? If we gave them a chance to surrender first, or... Or what? If we left them there. Left them? Bypassed the cave completely and moved on. Bypassed them. Is that a tactical judgment? I think it is. Or is it some nugget of compassion for the enemy unearthed by your fever? They are wounded. They're running out of supplies. They can't do much harm. Neither can they sink a battleship from this position. But their forces can. That is why we must destroy them. But if they have no more strength to fight... A reminder, Lieutenant. The identity of the men in the cave. They are Americans. They are enemy. Wounded, healthy, walking or lying down. They are enemy. The Japanese army does not bypass. The Japanese army attacks. The Japanese army wipes out its opponents to bring an end to this war. They're wounded. They're beaten and they're wounded. Their forces have suffered heavy losses. The rules of war rules. Lieutenant Yamuri, it is odd that you should require this reminder. But the comparative health and well-being of the enemy, his comfort or his discomfort, the degree of his anguish or his incapacities, have no bearing on military action. These things have no more to do with a tactical move or a decision of command than the fortunes of an anthill that you step on when we move forward to attack. But they're not ants. Correct. They are enemy. If when we enter the cave they are lying on the ground, crying in agony, pleading for mercy, I can assure you I will have no more compunction about making them a head shorter than I would about stepping on that anthill. Captain, they are men. You are not listening. They are enemy. This is war, and in war you kill. You kill, Lieutenant. Do you understand? You kill until you are ordered to stop killing. No! Now, pick up your broken field glasses and prepare to attack, or I will have you shot. So. Sections, assemble! Sergeant Yamazaki. Sir. You will handle the first section. Sergeant Hino. Hi. Take the second section. Lieutenant Ishimoto. Hi. Yours is the third section. Now, we move out. Lieutenant Yamori, let me help you to your feet. I will take care of him, Sergeant, when we return. Yes, sir. Captain, what you do to those men in the cave? Will it shorten the war by a week? By a day? An hour? Enough. May I ask the captain, what is his pleasure? How many have to die? 
before he receives satisfaction. Offhand, Lieutenant Yamuri, I would say all of them. I don't care who they are or where they are. If they are the enemy, they are to be destroyed. First day of the war or last day of the war, we destroy them. Rest now, Lieutenant. I will be back. Your field glasses are broken. I will take new ones from the Americans. My glasses. My binoculars. Yes, I, I broke them when I... When I... Anytime you say, Lieutenant. What? What? What did you? Looks like you can't use those binoculars now, though. Binoculars? To help you with a duck shoot. Well, we'll just have to follow your orders blind. <laughs> blind as a bat. Sergeant. Sergeant. Cazarano? Of course, when we start firing, there'll be flashes. Wait a minute. Maybe that'll be enough for you to lead the charge, just like San Juan Hill, huh? Of course, we'll be going down, not up. Wait. Hold on. Maybe he wants to put it off. You want to hold the attack till later? No. Uh, yes. I, I mean... What do you mean, sir? Cosrano, uh, something... Something happened. Yeah. You broke your glasses. Now you can't see down there. Tell you what, I'll get you a new pair of one of them Japanese, if we make it inside. No, you don't understand. Those men in the cave... Men now? Hey, boys, he called them men. And all this time I thought they were the enemy, to be destroyed just like that. Yeah, like animals. And what do you do with the animals when they get in your way? You kill them, right, Sergeant? Right. You slaughter them. You kill, kill, kill till they're all dead. Then you dig them up and kill them again. Ain't that right, Lieutenant? No. There's not going to be an attack. Those men are wounded, starved. There's no point in... in... Hold it. You hear that? Jeep on the road. Hold fire. Lieutenant Cattell here? I... He's right here. I have your orders, Lieutenant. Orders? You're to pull off the hill, sir. Who says? Colonel Hagen, that's who. Why would he say that? Considering he just sent a new lieutenant to lead the charge. I... Don't you guys know? Know what? Guess you haven't heard. <laughs> Air Force dropped a bomb on Japan this morning. So? A big one. I mean, the granddaddy of every bomb ever made. A, uh, I think they call it an atomic bomb. What about it? Well, they figure this is going to end the war inside of a few hours. The Emperor is ready to give up. Well, ain't that something. All units are to pull back to base camp and wait it out. See what happens. Some kind of announcement coming any time now. I'm gone. Is this it? All right, boys, you heard the man. Get your gear and move out. Oh, man. I'm gonna get me the biggest steak you ever saw. First thing I'll head for is a hot bath. How about it, Lieutenant? You with us? Or do you want to stay here and fight it out all by your lonesome? Uh, with you. Something on your mind, Lieutenant? Yeah. Yeah, something. I'll bet. But I wouldn't fret it if I was you. There'll be other wars sooner or later. Other caves. Other human beings you can knock off. I, I hope not. God help us. I hope not. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven on the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. 
Shakespeare, The Merchant of Venice. But applicable to any moment in time, to any group of soldiery, to any nation on the face of the earth, or, as in this case, to the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At twilightzoneradio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD, or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. 